Hi everybody. So Apple has once again decided to change the look of Apple numbers on the iPad and how you can uh, do different things with it. So this is my latest update on how to make a graph and use some formulas using Apple numbers. So to start with, of course, you're going to start with tapping the Apple numbers app. Now when it comes up, first thing you're going to need is a new spreadsheet. So you're going to click the plus at the top corner and you'll probably want to choose blank or blank spreadsheet. Now with the spreadsheet, first of all you have a title up here where it says table one. So if you tap on that you can, if you want, change whatever the name of that title is. I'm using a Bluetooth keyboard in order to type things, but you can use the regular keyboard if you want to. So I'm going to call this distance versus time data, something like that. Okay, so at the top and on the right there are these sort of gray areas here. They don't really need to be used too often for graphing unless, for example, you're going to graph more than one line on the graph. So, for example, if you had three lines on one graph, you might want to label things in those gray areas, and then they could show up on a legend. But other than that, you don't really need them too often. So what I'm going to first do is enter some data that I collected into the chart. Now, one nice thing that Apple has fixed is that when you begin to type letters, they actually start out at lowercase. So you would have to shift if you want to make it uppercase, where it automatically used to always do uppercase. So now at least you have that lowercase option. So I'm going to enter the rest of my numbers. Okay, and I chose these numbers so I could show some of the other features that come along with graphing. So now what I'm going to go to make a graph. I'm going to tap up here to start. And I'm going to grab this little dot on the lower right corner. And I'm going to drag it over all of my numbers. Down here at the bottom, you'll see this cell. So if I tap that, and then I want to tap Create New Chart. Now it gives me some different types of graphs I'm going to make. Typically, what a lot of times we want to start with in a, as a science graph is this one down here. It's called a scatter graph. And so it kind of just puts all the points up right away. But there's a lot of different things, of course, we need to fix on here. So to begin with, if I just tap on the graph itself, and I come up here to this little paintbrush. This is going to be sort of my best friend up here, is that little paintbrush. One of the first things, of course, I'm going to need is a title for my graph. So I want to click on the title button. Now, what I probably don't need is a legend, again, unless I have a lot of things in it. So I want to undo the legend there. And this is one thing I, I don't like about Apple Numbers, is they don't often really show you a zero line. So if your graph is going to cross zero, what you'll often need to do is come down to here where it says add reference line on the y-axis. And sometimes it'll give you some choices, but usually you might have to hit custom. And you don't really need the name, so you can turn that off. But you want to change that to a zero. So hit enter. And then it'll make a nice zero line for you to look at. That can be really helpful in terms of that. Now there's another important part of this that we'll come back to a little bit later. Next, if we look at style. Now here, it has these things called connection lines. This can be useful if you know, for example, you want to connect all the dots. So for example, if I know I want to connect all of these in a straight line, I can select that button there, and it just happens to be a perfectly lined graph. Now that won't always be the case, so you may not want to use the connection lines. If it was a curved graph, I might want to connect that curve there. Also, this data symbol, you notice they put these giant dots in there. Uh, that's kind of new. If you tap on that and tap on data symbol, you can change it or just get rid of them all together. So again, that depends on how well you want to see those actual points or not. Um, or maybe the plus or something like that. You can change it to something else. That's kind of new. I'm going to go back to the dots for a moment. Grid lines. So you definitely want major grid lines on. Okay, in both the x-axis and on the y-axis. You might want minor grid lines, that's up to you. Uh, sometimes it can get a little clutter with the minor grid lines, but you can add those or not add those, it's up to you. Tick marks, again, if you want to have those little cross marks on there, maybe centered uh, on the axes, you can choose those. So for both of them, I'm going to put some centered tick marks just so I can see them. I kind of like them on my graph. And then labels, really important you want to be able to label what the axes are. So you want to tap under both x-axis and y-axis the value labels. I'm going to put value axis on there right now. And I'll talk about how to fix those next. 
is just sort of getting everything set up. So those are the main things that you want to be able to do right away. So I'm going to tap out of for a minute. So if I want to change my title, I can tap on the word title. So it lights up, and then I can change it. So I have a distance versus time graph. Same thing for the axes. If I tap on them, I can just simply delete them and put in my title. To go back to an important thing about that line that we're going to make for our graph. So I'm going to tap on the graph here again. I'm going to tap the paint, paintbrush and come back here to chart. What I might want to use more often down here, and then this is something again new, and I'm so glad that Apple finally asked, added this, is a trend line feature. So if I choose trend lines, and this might be a better idea to use for a graph. For example, if I know it should be a line, I can tap linear, and it will make a nice line. In this case, because this is a sort of perfect bit of data, all of the data lines up perfectly in a straight line. But let's say, for example, it didn't. Now, let's say my data instead, and one of the nice things about this functionality is that when you alter data, it automatically alters it on the graph, too. So let's say this instead said, like, negative 9 here and 3 here and 11 here. So if I come back to my graph here and I had tried to choose a line thing here. It makes this wavy thing, which is not what's called a best fit line. That's not correct. So I don't want that. So that's why now back here in chart, by using the linear trend line, I do get that best fit line like I should. So that can be really helpful. Again, if it looks like it should be a curve, you can choose something like exponential or polynomial, and that will also give you a, if it's a curve value. So that can be really useful in that fact back to my original one. So again, I'm really happy that Apple has now added that trend line function. That's going to be much more useful to be able to make these type of graphs. So that's basically how to make a very simple graph on here. So that's one of the important things that we can use here. Another thing we might want to be able to do is allow the spreadsheet to do some math for us. So let's say I wanted to take this information here and use it to calculate something. And maybe I want that on sort of another sheet. So if I click the plus up here and I select new sheet, that will make sort of another sheet. And you can link the two together. So let's say I wanted to sort of take an average of the distance over an average of time. Okay. And that might give me something that I call average velocity. So here's what I want to start calculating it. So what I'm going to do is whenever I want to start a formula, I want to tap down here in the bottom corner of this little equal sign. This begins a formula part. Now the stuff I want to calculate is back here, and this is where parentheses are really helpful. But let's say I want to take the change in the x value over the change in the t value. So I would start off with a parenthesis. I would select this first cell. Then I want to select the minus the cell before it, close parentheses, then I want to hit the divided by, and parentheses, this cell, minus this cell, close parentheses. Now, whenever you finish up doing a formula, you need to hit this little green check mark at the bottom. Okay? And that gives me sort of an average number of two. Now, I want to keep repeating that for each one of these numbers. Okay, the next one minus the first one, and the next one minus that. Instead of having to go back and do that every single time, instead, into the cell that first, my first cell, and I click down here and hit cell again. This is really cool. So if I click this autofill cells, what it lets me do is drag this down. And what it did is it did the equation over and over again for each step. Okay, so for example, like even if I click in this one, okay, it shows me that I use some different things here. So this can be a really helpful thing to actually do formulas. Now, if for example I wanted it to match up with the times in this previous one, I might want to capture those particular times. So another thing you can do is for example, let's say I want to insert a column here. So I tap on the B here, and where it says column actions, I can add a column before it, new body column. 
And now what I want to do is I want to copy these times over. So here, I'm going to select that time and I'm going to grab that little dot, select copy, go to sheet two, tap right there, and select paste. And now I can know sort of the times that go with those calculations. Okay, so again, it's a really useful thing now. Some of the updates to Apple I think are really good. Uh, I really like now that they finally fixed some of their previous problems. And so that's how you can make a graph and use some equations. Hope that helps. See you next time.